What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Gold Guy YouTube channel. In this episode of the Turbocharging a Non-Turbo Subaru Trilogy, I am actually going to be installing the turbo along with the water and oil lines. In the last episode I did the exhaust which was um, unequal length headers and then the downpipe and the midpipe. I'm kind of trying to do them in order of exhaust intercooler turbo and then the reveal where in the end obviously um, I'm gonna start this thing up and it's gonna run hopefully really good it's probably gonna be uh, might be a little bit difficult to get this video done as it was uh, very difficult to get even just the headers on the car and that's all I've done so far so I don't have enough I don't have any more time to talk let's just go ahead and get into the turbo charge install installation all right, so this is the turbo I am using uh, on my Subaru. This is a TD05 turbocharger. Uh, there will be a link to this on where I bought it on eBay in the description. But before we install it on the car, I'm going to adjust the, uh, whoops. Uh, usually when that happens, you can never find them, but I got lucky today. Before I put it on the car, these are preset at 12 PSI of boost. A little too much for me being that I have no engine mods it's just a stock engine so I'm going to tone this down a little bit and then I want to make this longer so that the wastegate opens more frequently that looks good to me probably about five pounds of boost that'll do all right guys now it's time to remove the old nasty air box and everything that goes with it. So let's just go ahead and start pulling off hoses, deep taking off lines. Let's get this big old lunchbox out of here. Go home, lunchbox. Take your air filter friend with you. There we go. Lunchbox number two is removed. No more lunchbox. So in order to push the uh, up pipe down as much as I can, I'm going to have to move these two lines here. One's an oil line and one I think is, one's the power steering pump line. So the turbo's not hitting the back of the engine. All right, let's see if we can fit the turbo now. Please fit, please fit. Oh yeah, I might just have to relook at a few more things to uh, get the air filter on and stuff, but that fits pretty dang good. So I think that it would be easier to put the oil and water lines on the turbo before we get it on the car. I'm going to use this hose revolution water and oil gasket kit for a td05 turbo first off we got the oil feed banjo bolt here and it has a millimeter restriction so we're going to need a hose for that and then the oil return line right here all right so we're going to have this pointing away from the exhaust pop that on there So there we go, that's the oil return. All right, and then the water return and feed lines. I'm not exactly sure how these are supposed to go. So I'm just gonna kind of wing it and hope for the best. And then you wanna use two copper washers on the top and bottoms of these. That's really as tight as I can get these on here. So, Let's go ahead and get the turbo on the car now. 
First the gasket goes on, and then the turbo. That's pretty damn tight. Oh yeah. Now we just gotta get the downpipe to fit. Okay guys, so the turbocharger is installed on the car and now we're at the part of this build where we need to install the oil and the coolant lines for the turbocharger because you gotta cool it down and you gotta lubricate it or else it'll explode on you. So to do that, we need all these things. So for the coolant lines, we're going to be using a half inch heater hose. Pick this up at Napa Auto Parts. They'll cut it for you and it's pretty cheap. Also, we're going to need a 5 8 inch hydraulic hose for the oil drain from the turbo. It's very important to use hydraulic hose and not heater hose because heater hose can't stand up to the high temperature oil. And then the last hose you need is a quarter inch hydraulic hose. This is for the oil feed, and then you need some fittings. So for the coolant lines, I'm going to be teeing off of the heater core hoses going into the, the firewall. And then you need a T fitting, one side male threaded, and then the other two female. And this is for the oil feed. You're gonna have to remove your uh, oil pressure sensor, tap this in, and then you need a quarter inch hose barb fitting. Put that in there and then you're going to put your oil feed hose on there and that's going to run to the turbo. And then also you need some hose clamps to tighten everything up and that's pretty much it. And then this fitting is a little too small so I'm going to have to put some electrical tape on this fitting. And if you guys think this is stupid then it might be a little bit but I actually had a guy that works in a hydraulic shop tell me to do this pop the hose back on and then we're gonna get this clamp that was on the car and put that back right on there and put that in there tighten that up Okay, and then I'm pretty much just gonna do the same exact thing on the bottom. And I've got both of these fittings installed. Everything's good. This is half inch heater hose. This is what's going to be feeding coolant to the turbo. I know this looks a little bit crazy, but I think all this stuff's gonna work just fine. Assembly's all good. I'm gonna reinstall those back on the car. Now we just have to trim these hoses and connect them to the turbo. There we go, now the turbo's cooled. Now I just have to lubricate it. And here I've removed the alternator, which sits right here. And there is the oil pressure sensor. So let's go ahead and remove this oil pressure sensor. There you go, that's your oil pressure sensor. Looks like that. Here is my T. So basically, this is going to go on the top of the T. And then this is gonna go in the engine and this is going to go to the turbo. This is the oil feed. So there we go, Teflon taped up and we're gonna go ahead and thread that right in there. Now let's go ahead and tap in this hose barb fitting. That's nice and tight there. Now let's get this oil feed hose on there. There you go, and that's on there. Okay. 
Okay, and now, last but not least, the oil pressure sensor. Oil feed is pretty much complete, so let's go ahead and pop that electrical connection back on the oil pressure sensor there. Put the alternator back in place, kind of where it goes, see if it fits. It looks like that's going to fit just fine. And now to the turbo side of the oil feed. Okay, and here is the hose coming from the oil pressure sensor T. This is the oil feed. Here's the oil feed on the turbo. And let's just cut that. Okay. And let's go ahead and pop that on. Tighten up that hose clamp. That's nice and tight. And we just gotta tighten up that banjo bolt. And that should do it, guys. And now all that's left to do is install the oil drain line. And I'm going to be using a hole saw bit instead of just a drill bit to minimize oil shavings in the oil pan. And I am going to drain and change the oil after I do this. So let's go ahead and cut this hole. Kind of figured that would happen. All right, I gotta get a container to drain that in. Okay, hole is cut. Let's go ahead and tap this hole. We're using a half inch 14 thread tap, bought it at Harbor Freight. Son of a bitch, fell right in the oil pan. That was bound to happen. We've got that hole tapped, now let's plug in the oil drain fitting. Now we can get a hose on there. But it definitely is not ideal that it's kind of angled down. That was just the best I could do. So hopefully it's gonna work out fine. We'll see. All right, so we've got the oil drain hose connected to the bottom of the turbo. Now we have to cut a little bit of excess off of here. All right, get a clamp on there. There it is. Now we just gotta tighten up the clamp and the turbo cooling and lubrication is finished. So there's the bottom of the turbo. That's where it's draining. Oh yeah, nice and tight. Alrighty guys, so that's pretty much it for the uh, cooling and lubrication, the water and the oil lines. It's pretty late. I'm pretty sure I have oil in my eye. So I'm gonna call it a night. Since I cut a big ass notch out of the cross member down there to uh, fit the up pipe for the turbo, I'm going to have to reinforce it somehow. And a lot of people weld in reinforcements, but another option is to have a bolt-on reinforcement, which I fabricated here. Basically a little mini I-beam. Uh, it kind of looks like a pistol slide. Like there's the chamber and the barrel and the sight. Anyway, so this is actually going to be a dual purpose um, bracket here it's going to be holding the up pipe in place so it doesn't move around and it's also going to be reinforcing the cross member on my car holding the engine in place so a very important piece i made here so let's go ahead and get it bolted on to the cross member the reason that i fabricated a bolt-on bracket is so that i can remove the bolts remove the bracket and then i can take the up pipe out if i have to All right, so there we go. Now we got a fully supported up pipe and a reinforced cross member. The last part of turbocharging my non-turbo Subaru is making the inlet pipe. And that's the pipe that the air filter is going to be attached to, as well as some, a couple of vacuum lines, the uh, valve cover breathers, the brake booster and anything that needs vacuum to work is going to be hooked up to this pipe here. So what I'm going to have to do is put this in there just like that. 
And now I'm gonna have to cut it at an angle and then weld it so that the air filter is sitting right around here. So let's go ahead and mark this out the best I can. That's actually not too bad for just eyeballing it. I don't think the angle is enough though. Yeah, definitely more angle. Many more cuts later. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Definitely looks better. Let's weld it. What I'm doing here is cutting a hole in my intake manifold and then I'm cutting the old plastic ring off of the stock intake manifold which holds the mass airflow sensor housing, then I'm going to glue it onto my new intake manifold. I've welded the nuts on, so now I just have to glue it, and I'm going to be using this Harbor Freight glue, mixing it in this Harbor Freight oil filter wrench container. So here I am drilling the holes for the vacuum lines. Then inserting the rubber grommets that came with my Spectre kit. Then finally inserting the vacuum line bungs. All right, now we can install the air intake pipe. It's not pretty, but I think it'll work just fine. I got all the bungs for the vacuum lines and I even got the mass airflow sensor on there. And it's pretty sturdy actually. I don't know if it seals up 100%, but I think it'll be fine. So let's go ahead and install this. And then the air filter. It's a pretty good fit. Let's tighten it up. And then we install the mass airflow sensor wires. And then the vacuum lines. And then the second valve cover breather. And then last but not least, the brake booster. All right, there we go. I'm so close to being able to start this car. It's the moment of truth. I'm finally going to start my car after about four weeks of turbocharging it. Oh geez, I'm, I got the shakes. What else is there to say though? Let's just start this thing up. I'm so scared. <laughs> 